well, you had and still have a lot of uh, peers who are fans of yours. The legendary Ernest Tubb once said that whether a new song or an old one, when Jeannie sings it, it becomes Jeannie's song. So that's yeah. Can you imagine Ernest Tubb would say that about me? It just I hear these things, and I, someone sent me uh, a copy of the Ernest Tubb Midnight Jamboree the first night that I made an appearance on. Oh, wow. There. And it just, Ernest was talking then, and it was so interesting because you hear so many people saying today, well, this is, today's country music isn't country, and on and on. And they were saying that when I came in, because in the 60s when we started adding strings and all of this, and there were a lot of people who said that wasn't country. And uh, after I sang, Ernest Tubb said on that, on that tape, he said, uh, so to all of you who are wondering where country music is going these days, <laughs> that is where it's going. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it, was, it was something. Yeah, that must be. But you know, country music, as as rock music, everything just keeps changing. Life changes. And I, and I just think that um, the, the people love the style of country music that they were used to, and it, and resistance, you know, change is always met with resistance when you're sure. trying to change something that everybody loves. So that's the good thing. Our music is loved so much. But change happens, and, and the new music is saying something to a new generation of people. I personally am I'm just such a fan of all of it that I like all of it. Are, are you afraid, though, that some of the tradition is getting left behind in some cases? Well, in some cases, yeah, but I think there are some uh, artists who are still trying to uh, maintain a good bit of that. Sure. And also part of the tradition uh, was singing songs about family and... and uh, the importance of uh, of the character for family, you know. I think that's always sure. been a part of country music and respect for the family unit. And I hear a lot of songs about that in the newer artists, too. So it's going to be different, but it's like I told somebody the other day, you know, we're not driving the same cars we were in the 60s, so no, no, I no. guess things have to change. I guess so, but you, you'll still always be one of my favorites. <laughs> well, I appreciate you, Paul. And uh, we, I think that uh, that there are a lot, like I say, of the artists who are... Alan Jackson, I think, is very much uh, keeping the traditional country sure. music in, in his sound. And Brad does... Uh, Paisley. To a great extent. Dan, I mean, he's branching over in the other because the market pressures are there for the young artists today. The marketing is all different. Yeah. So I think that they're trying their best to do it, and I think Martina has done some incredible things. I think her traditional country album was it was a great, sure, a great timeless. thing because I think it introduced. Uh, traditional country music to a whole new group of fans. Yeah, it certainly did. And uh, well, can we get? Uh, we'll get back to the hit records, I guess. You've had many hit records other than "Don't Touch Me," uh, "Farm in Pennsylvania," "Can I Sleep in Your Arms," "Lucky Ladies," "Pride," "All Right," "I Signed the Papers," and uh, you've written quite a few of your own records too, right? Well, actually, I've had more. Uh, songs recorded by other artists. In fact, I was just going through my catalog recently trying to uh, look up some songs that I've had recorded by other people and that I have never recorded. And so I'm planning on doing some of those. But uh, yeah, I had songs recorded by Willie Nelson and Dottie West, Norma Jean, Connie Smith, Ray Price. And uh, uh, not to forget Fair and Young with 1972. Fair and young, of course, yeah. Leaving and saying goodbye. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, that went right to number one on the charts, too, with Farron. Yeah, I was so proud of that. Um, Farron was a very special person to me. He was so fun, and, you know, he could get on people's nerves pretty heavy, including mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think Roger Miller said it best when he said the only thing bigger than Roger's mouth was his heart. <laughs> and that's absolutely true. And, uh, well, this is a little bit off topic, but uh, Farron Young had a club down on Printer's Alley, right? Back in uh, back in the day, and you eventually bought that club yourself, right? Yeah, that was funny that that uh, would happen. I think a lot of us got into those situations, and then it wasn't what we thought it was going to be when we got into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just very hard to keep up because when you're running a business like that, you've got to dedicate a good bit of time to sure. it. And you can hire good people, but, uh, you know, that only goes so far. In the end, you have to be there and you have to make the decision. And it was a load that I couldn't carry and also work the road and keep up the opera schedule and sure. writing on all the other things I wanted to do. And I used to tease Farron about it. I said, why didn't you tell me how hard this was to do? <laughs> and I wouldn't have come along behind you and made the same mistake. <laughs> <laughs> he was there opening night and was very supportive. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had fun with it, but it was just a situation... I realized real early on I was really over my head. It wasn't time for me to do that kind of thing. No. Um, well, you became an Opry member in September of 1967, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you mind if I ask who inducted you into the Opry? You know, I was. I am confused on that, and I always, every time I do an interview like this, I think I'm going to go back and check. On one of the... One of the first times I was there, um, Hank Snow introduced me, and and one time uh, Ernest Tubb did, and one time Roy Acuff did. That explains the fog I was in. You are so excited, uh, and you're in such a whirlwind. Oh, sure. And uh, I, I've got those all mixed up in my mind <laughs> from but, when I was first on as a guest and when I became a member. I do know that Texas Troubadours were backing me. so Still I'm all not, good company. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Well, you had not only a successful solo career, but you also had a very successful career with Jack Green singing duets. And, uh, Jack and I had a show together for 11 years, and I don't remember how many chart records and were nominated in the top five duet teams in CMA for five years. It was, uh, it was a great period in my career. I've always been proud of the shows we did together. We, that came about because we were both on Ernest Tubbs television show. Sure. And in the early years of television, there was a lot of downtime for technical difficulties. <laughs> and uh, so we wouldn't have anything to do while they worked out the technical end. And uh, while we were waiting on other people to perform or whatever. So as always, we'd sit around with the guitar and sing. and. Um, Everybody join in singing harmony, and that's when Jack and I realized that our voices both had that raspy quality, <laughs> and that our voices blended quite well. 